everybody. Richard Dolan here for a courageous conversation. Well, I'm out of date. You're right. There's no going back. How do you, do you feel the weight of that, that desire? Yeah, I have been there for a while. Stories still being written and you cut the story short. As they say, I'm playing with house money. They said, ah, neo-fascist. You can't imagine, Richard, I've heard everything now. But I'll tell you what, you ain't never buying your time back. Value your time. Once you start a courageous conversation, there ain't ever going back to an ordinary one. Hey, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. No matter where you are in the world, it's good to see all my friends here on a Friday. I want to make sure that you all know that this is a courageous conversation with Noah Schwartz. And uh, as I'm looking at my phone, because I just missed a call from Miami, which is where he resides. I'm like, ooh, I hope that's not him. Um, but it is very cool to know that we've got ourselves a very cool guest. And, and you know, what's interesting about, oh, he's coming in right now. What's really cool about Noah is the fact that um, for a lot of people, before I get to him, um, he, he's, he's making a transition in life. And I think for a lot of people here, whether you're a realtor or whether you're a builder or whether you're a mother or a survivor, uh, whether you're, you've once been this and now you're that, the reality is, is that you're always going to go through a transition. And if you're writing down any notes, I'd start right there. You know, when you're starting to live a life of transition, you realize that there's, there's going to be things you've got to revisit. There's going to be reasons and there's going to have to be justifications and there's going to have to be a discipline to stay the course. And oftentimes it's often a, a crucible moment, a crisis, you know, a challenge or a change that is, is, is brought about where you go, that's it. This is it. This, this is the moment I live for me. This is the moment I do it for them. This is the moment I'm going to be all I can be and I'm meant to be. For Noah Schwartz, it's not too often I get to, in fact, chat with and have a conversation alongside of people that, that I meet through good friends. And, and quite frankly, Noah is one of those guys I met through a great friend. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm not just talking about any friend. I mean, one of my best friends. And so, um, so he and I got a chance to really get to know each other. And, and one of the things I was really blown away by at first, when you first meet Noah Schwartz, aside from the fact that he's a, a poker player legend uh, and he's a dad and, and he's an awesome a philosopher on all things life. He's tall. I mean, he's handsome. I mean, he's on fire really being all lit up about really being an inspiration for people. So, so first and foremost, let's give him a warm welcome. What's up there, Noah Schwartz? What's up, brother? What's up? But thanks for having me, man. Truly, uh, it's an honor and I'm, I'm glad to be here and chatting with you. This is one of, uh, one of the few conversations I'm extremely excited about and, and, and the, the, the way we're going to take it and where we're going to go with it. I mean, it's just we're punching, we're jabbing. We don't even know where we're going, but that's life, right? I, 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 I love it, man. I, I won't speak to nor, in fact, insinuate that you've got OCD or a commitment to color coordination, given the looks of that book stand behind you. But man, it is impressive. That is some um, you've got the suits all lined up now, don't you, Noah? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm OCD in a lot of things, but it, it helps me remember. And then it's my mind. It's like cognitive dissonance. You just know where things are and you just grab them when you got to run. Hey, yo, man, big true story real quick, because everybody here, before I give you a big formal introduction, we get started on this thing we call a courageous conversation. I moved a home. I ended up packing my things away. I took my jewelry case, which was a big long tray with pens and cufflinks and, and bracelets, like things you've got, things you eat in your spare time. And I put it into my new place. And when I looked at it, I too realized, because I'm also OCD, I said, oh, wow, pen, 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 pen. Hey, one's missing. And it actually, because I was missing that one pen, it opened up Pandora's box. These movers robbed me. They stole stuff, jerseys, things from me. So my point is, is that it actually pays to be OCD, brother. It actually pays. Oh, and, and, and kind of to add to what you're saying, I mean, I just literally moved into this place with my fiance uh, 10 days ago, and we numbered every single box. We're like, well, now we're like, high, low. We're like, we want to make sure that everything's there. You know, it's just a good way to live. And it teaches you discipline and it's an important uh, trait to have, I feel. Well, it's, it's all about responsible. It's all about being accountable. So listen, man, just so you know the context for this conversation, three things you need to know. This conversation started about a year ago when COVID first hit. And I started this thing called the Courageous Conversation where I thought, hey, let me try to celebrate Friday with people who are in quarantine, stay-at-home orders, not sure what's going on, just to keep make sure that everyone mentally is in the game and still kind of playing, right? And I thought to myself, let me reach out to some celebrity friends to see how they're doing. And it took off. 
And as a result, I've been able to work with people that you and I both know, like our friend Mike Tyson, and I mean, people like uh, the Gold Blooms and, and Larry King, God bless them, and, and, and I mean, so many others. We got Steve Aoki next week and, and Sugar Ray Leonard next week. And of course, we got the Noah Schwartz this week. And so what's really cool is that's the conversation. Now, what began to happen is my friends over at Braun Studios took notice. My, my filmmaker friend said, hey, man, we, we've got some real deep need to find people who are courageously up to the things that matter to them. Richard, keep having these conversations because we want to pay attention. So on this call and in this room, who's listening are not just my friends and people who follow me. And of course, we've recorded so others will download it when the time zone suits them. But there's some people in the background that are really watching to see exactly what's going on. And I'm going to give this to you, Noah, because here's the headline, folks. Life after game. And I do mean poker game, because that's what we're here to talk about with Noah, not about where he's been and what it looks like to have a, a great poker face, because Noah was born with a poker face. Poker <laughs> face right? right? Chica, chica, chica. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. And we'll tell the story about chica, chica, but because um, that keeps making me laugh, man. Every time I hear uh, Chick-fil-A or chica, chica, man, I just laugh. I, it keeps I just you young, man. It keeps you young. You never, never lose your inner child, right? I mean, so, so speaking of inner child, let's start back there. Like, what, what first had you? How, how did you come to get into poker playing as a profession, even as a, as a, whether a calling or a vocation? Why don't we start there, brother? Oh, yeah, great. Um, yeah, and, and, that, and that's easy to delve into. You know, quite frankly, it, it, it happened in kind of a sad type of way. Um, I was 16 years old, um, playing baseball in high school. And my father got diagnosed with um, basically terminal lung cancer. And when that happened, um, I needed an escape from, from real life. You know, it was like, and he kept telling me, because I was so young, you know, you're not really developed yet. Your brain isn't where it needs to be. You're not mature. And he, you know, he was an old school guy from New York, from Brooklyn. He had to tell me, hey, no, you know, don't worry. Things are going to be all right. You know, I'm a strong guy. I'm just going through some trouble, uh, so on and so forth. And for me, you know, it's your father. You, so you believe what they say. You love them to death. And to see him go through these trials and tribulations and watch him go from 6'2", a burly guy, 6'30", I mean, 230, excuse me, and, and going through chemo and so forth. Um, and then he, he got whittled down. You know, he was on anticoagulants and blood thinner and all this stuff. And I saw him go to about 160, 170, and it was really destroying me. And I was living with a friend at the time. Um, and poker, he introduced me to poker. And poker kind of gave me that window of opportunity. And for me, it was a coping mechanism. You know, seeing this happen to my father, when I was with my friends and playing poker, it kind of helped me escape reality in, to some degree. Um, so that's kind of how I started, you know, quite frankly. You know, I played baseball in high school. Um, and then I went on for a college scholarship. And I heard, uh, you know, I tore all the ligaments in my elbow. And from there, I was like, you know, I had either I like to have Tommy John surgery, which was an option. And uh, I decided, you know what, I'm going to focus my, my life on poker. And that's kind of how it all started. And it was just, it, it, it really, you know, so, and let me, let me rewind because I'm getting a little, you know, emotional here. i um, thinking about my father, but it's 20 years gone and life moves so fast. You know what I mean? So after he passed away, I wrote a 20 page letter, 18 pages saying everything I do in my life, I was going to dedicate to him. And that was the real moment because he gave me so much inspiration in life. He was my mentor, my guide, my everything. And always, he taught me the important things that really matter in life. And I think at times we, we lose focus on what's really important and how valuable time truly is. Um, so that's kind of how I fell into poker and I loved it. You know, I was, I'm always very competitive through sports and I always want to be the best at whatever I do. And I love the challenge. So I'm super persistent, resilient, and I, I love it. You know, I love stepping up to the plate. Well, you know, I've, I've met a number of poker players, but none quite versed like you. I mean, you, you come across as I've spent time with you as a favorite student, someone who can appreciate the importance of expanding a mind. Like, I mean, gosh, you made my head spin. When we were talking about just health and chemistry and molecules. I mean, more of that another time. But but when did you notice yourself hitting either the peak of being a poker legend and star and you knew that it was time to go left or go right? When, do you remember that time? Yeah, so, so, so thinking about it, it actually happened quite recently where I decided, you know what, I'm gonna pivot because I'm a people's person. You know, I love poker. I love the competitive aspect, right? I love the challenge of being the best, you know? And, and that's how it always was. Even when I started playing video games when I was young, I remember playing Madden and I would learn every single audible to every single offense or defense because I always wanted to win. You know, I don't want to lose at anything, whatever, if we're flipping a coin, if we're, if we're doing jumping jacks, it, it's just embedded deep in, in me. You know, it's when, if they analyze my epigenetics, they look at me, they're like, I'm just different. I'm cut from a different cloth. 
And it was as of recent, I, I felt, you know, up until a couple of years ago, I became number four in the world in poker. They have a ranking system called the Global Poker Index. Um, and I was like, wow, this has been a great ride. But I realized that I went to so many amazing places. And what was I doing all the time while I was there? And I was young. I was trying to earn money, make money, and I was gambling. And I didn't realize that I was, maybe I didn't want to accept it or what it was, but I was addicted to gambling, right? And I loved it. And it's something I'm good at. But inevitably, I'm like, I want more. I want to touch people. I want to help people. If I wake up every day and I say, if I can inspire one person, one person, if I just say one thing to someone, I help them and it makes me feel great and it makes them feel great. And so essentially what I want to do is change humanity for the better because there's things that I don't like, direction in certain ways that things are going that I want to be the difference, right? So again, it's about leaving a legacy at the end of the day and I want to do it in more than just poker. So that's why I decided that Pivoting was important to me. You know, it's it's so true, guys. I mean, for those who are just tuning in, this is Noah Schwartz, number four in the world, according to the Poker Index of Great Players. And I mean, you know, getting to know you, uh, for, for, for all kidding aside, I mean, man, you, you, you wanted to bet with me if we would find a parking spot, if, uh, you know, which elevator was going to come first, left or right, and you were wagering left, right, and center. I'm just kidding around. But I mean... Uh, for those who don't know this guy, I mean, you're, you're such a personable guy, but but if you're writing down any notes, Noah, and if you're making any mental note of anything, I really believe that there's a, there's a place in your life right now where you're making this incredible pivot from poker to purpose, from poker to purpose. And, and, and that's why you're speaking so passionately and fervently and, and so powerfully for people to say, Hey, you know what? It's, it's okay. You're not stuck doing what you've always done. Would you agree with that sentiment? Yeah, yeah, wholeheartedly. And, and you know, and I think a lot of people, I remember when I first took the step, it's like in life, you, you, people don't, again, people don't realize just how valuable time is and you go and maybe you wake up in the morning and you're, and you're scrolling on social media as opposed to listening to a podcast or finding ways to one, create the better version, the best version of yourself and two, finding ways to imp in, impact people positively. Um, and, and that's what got me going and also lit my fire. So now, you know, I'm launching my charity um, you know, after my father, the Noah Schwartz Foundation, and essentially the theme is creating a better tomorrow today. Um, and that's the thing, right? Because at the end, you know, people kind of forget dead people rather quickly, you know, so at the end, it's about really touching people's lives and, and being a good human. And, and it, it doesn't take anything to be a good person, be a good human, and, and, and make a difference in the world. And if we all did that, touching one person each every day, I mean, the world would be a better place. Hey, listen, man, I mean, this is beyond like, this is not like some fortune cookie telltale all. I mean, it, it just sounds like you had a journey. What, what, what part of everything that you just said, do you find that you began to use in your poker games, Noah? I mean, you're, you're a personable guy. It's not just all science. You're not just counting cards or running the process in your brain. You're, you're intensely intelligent, by the way. Um, but a... but what, what parts of your, your, your tricks of the trade or your skill set from poker playing professionally that served you millions of dollars in winnings, what parts of that do you take forward with you and what parts of it do you wanna leave behind? Yeah, that, that, that's a, wow, man, you, you just you got great questions. I love this, man. You're just hitting me boom, boom, boom. I love it. Um, I told you, I'm gonna come and left. Yeah, yeah. right. This is like Rocky, Apollo Creed. He kept knocking him down and what happened? Rocky just gets up and he gets up again. Yeah. And Apollo Creed just like, he just, get, he, he just lost. He just looked in his eyes like, I can't beat this guy. You ain't all of that. You ain't all of that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I almost went off on a tangent. I kind of forgot the question in, in some capacity. Um, no, no, no. L listen, man. I mean, you have skill sets as a poker player, and they right. served you. But I know that they also run you. So if you were to pick a few of the ones that really rock for you that you don't mind bringing into your future world, your future mission, which ones would you take with you? Yeah, so, so some from a skill set. It's, it's reading. It's reading people. It's, it's when you and I are engaged in a conversation. I look at your mannerisms, the things you're saying, how you're involved, you know, and and, and – see how we're vibrating on the same frequency. But like when I play poker, I'm analyzing. People say, is it a game of skill or luck? And, and the way I explain it to everyone is, if you and I sat down for a couple hours and played poker, you could get lucky, right? You could get the best hand. I could get the second best hand. I could, I could lose my money. But if you and I sat in a room and we locked the door for six, six days, I'm going to make a lot of money off you. You're going to leave probably with no shirt or pants. So that, that's the thing. And it correlates to life. You know what I mean? When you, when you interact with people, you... You come across great people and you come across bad people, but it's being able to differentiate the ones and who you want to surround yourself with. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I got to say. No, oh, that's cool. I mean, you just, I, just, I got to just say this for the record. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful to have been left with my underpants. Thank you. 
Yeah. Um, I was quite embarrassed to leave with no socks, no shoes, no shirt, no tie, no pants. So I'm grateful. Thank you, Noah. I appreciate that that courtesy that you paid me. Humility, but, um, humility is one of the keys to life, right? That's it. That's it. But hey, man, I mean, you you just recently, I mean, probably one of the most recent movies that really captured the spirit of the game that that really gave you your your professional foundation before we talk about your next sort of life after poker. Um, you know, you we talked about Molly's game. We talked about the real life characters behind that. Were they really all that good? People want to know. Were they all really that good given your view of the world? What would you say to that? Um, in poker, it's really important is um, game selection. And a lot of people in those games, a lot of people in those underground games, um, they love to play. Their quality may be not so good, but the enjoyment, the scene, the vibe. I mean, that movie, the depiction of a lot of those people is, is pretty accurate. And it's, you know, I can't divulge some of the names just for, <laughs> for the sake of those, those people involved in that movie. But it's, it's really interesting when you're, when you're on the front lines and you see this and you're, you know, I mean, oddly enough, Paul Pierce just released a video which got him fired from ESPN a week ago where he was at an underground game and there were girls twerking and it was just not a, not a great thing, right? Um, but it's a different world, the, the, the things that we gamble on, the approach we take. And, and again, the reason I'm stepping away for the most part, I'm still going to do it to some degree because I love it and I love the competitive aspect, but I want more out of life. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of where I am right now. I'm just looking for something that I'm, I know what I'm passionate about, but in order to put my name onto something, I'm, I'm just kind of tiptoeing slowly and finding mm -hmm. exactly what that is. Now you're taking your time. I'm curious to know before we get to what it is that it might actually be, because maybe we'll discover it here together. Maybe we'll articulate it here together. We don't know, we got time. Um, and we're just warming up, chica chica. So I um, love it. Your exp I know that's an inside joke. It's so funny. We'll have to tell it in a, in a second because we're going to lose people. But um, you're expecting, my friend. I'm expecting a lot of things. But yeah, um, yeah, my fiance six and a half months pregnant. Um, so it, it's it's a blessing, you know, COVID baby. I know. No, hey, no, I'm, not, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Sometimes no, no, no. Wait, hey, listen, man, hold on. No, I mean, a lot of people drank, a lot of people ate, a lot of people gained weight. You just got to business. I mean, you took care of business. You were all in, all, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. And essentially, when I approach something, I'm, I'm usually all in conversations, relationships, mentorships. If I'm going to devote myself, my time, my effort, my energy, I want, I expect the same from the other person. And if I don't get it, then I'm out. But when you do something in life, you go all in. No, that's it. I mean, it's not just a it's not just a phrase or a terminology or a phenomenon of a, of a game called poker. It's 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 actually the game of life. Yeah. And a lot of people likely goes all in. But but tell me before we talk about all in and, and perhaps the origin of Chica Chica, um, your son or daughter is born. You let them gamble or not? You know, um, great question. It, I think about myself and the things that I went through. And 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 granted, when I just started gambling, my father had recently passed, but. So at 16, I was on my own, basically with an older brother who was five years older, and I didn't really have anyone to turn to, and I didn't have that mentorship. Um, but my mom was sort of in the picture, but if she would have told me, hey, don't do this, don't do that, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, so I would give them some important insight and, and, and wisdom and tell them, hey, listen, it's your life. You make your decisions. I'm going to be here to guide you and, and try to give you the best possible future. But you hold the key to the door, right? I don't have the lock. You have the key to unlock the door. And you're going to lead yourself down a path and I'm going to help guide you and I'm going to hold your hand. But at the end, you're going to make the end decision. So, so you're heading into a transition, Noah, you're, you're heading into a transition. And, and by the way, of course, if, if you haven't caught the sentiment of everybody down in the chat room, everyone's saying, congratulations, God bless, uh, you know, hey. uh, you know, to, to, to you, your, your beautiful fiance. Um, I mean, for, for you, brother, I mean, you're in the, you're the poster child of transition. You're, you're, you're transitioning philosophically, you're transitioning psychologically, you're transitioning emotionally, metaphysically, uh, literally, physically, all those things. Um, as you're tippy-toeing and, and really taking these baby steps through it, what are you looking for? What are you searching for as the next best thing to throw Noah Schwartz's life behind and into? Exactly. And, and so, so my thing is, my real reason to focus on building wealth is financial freedom, right? But the, I have a lot of friends who have had successful exits, made billions of dollars, and I talk to them. And, and, and my first question I asked, my friend actually just sold his company for 1.5 billion. He's now 60 years old. And I, and I said, hey, Sean, listen, I, I have a question for you. 
What is your biggest regret? If you have one, not that you do, I'm just curious and I want to do a deep dive into your mind. And he goes, no, that's a great question. And he goes, honestly, I worked a hundred hours a week for so many years. And, you know, I missed a lot of things that my child growing up, I missed a lot of these things. So he said, that's one of my regrets. So it's something that I battle with. Do I, do I folk and, and I'm okay financially right now. Um, but I want more in the sense, because I want to give back. I want to build schools in Vietnam. I want to help people. Um, so that's my goal by, by focusing on something and building something special. Cause one, it leaves a legacy, right? But at the end, it's, I think people focus once they get to a certain level of success financially, they place so much emphasis on accumulation. And I, and I don't think another friend of mine just wrote a book. His name is Bill Perkins, a commodities trader. He just wrote an interesting book called Die With Zero. Um, and there's some interesting fundamentals that he talks about. It's probably up here in the blue somewhere. Yeah, it's right here. Um, and I'm not promoting his book by any means, but nonetheless, um, he talks about some interesting things about how we accumulate, accumulate wealth, wealth, wealth. And then at the end, we just leave it to future generations instead of helping people now. Like, let's focus on now, as long as they're entitled, so on and so forth. And, and they're not just taking advantage of you. There's two different things and there's two different ways to look at it. Um, so that's my thing, like to build a legacy, work really hard on something, something that I truly love, which again, I'm searching because I'm a, I'm a people's guy. I put people together in deals and so on and so forth. And I piggyback a lot of deals. I surround myself with people that I feel are more intelligent than me and lift me higher and vibrate on my frequency and are genuine. Thank, That's thank, the key. Thank, thank you for the compliment. I don't think I heard, but I'm going to say, I'm just saying, hey, by the way, guess what's in here? Tequila. In here. No? Close, but Angel's, Angel's Envy. Yeah. You nailed it, bro. I'm, you nailed it. I was, I was with them yesterday. I was with them yesterday, Angel Envy, guys. Another one of your buddies, but but let's let's riff off what you're talking about because Noah, for those who are watching this and, and for those who are here uh, and they know me very very well, I'm I'm just a great curator and creator of the impossible. That that's just what I do, um, and it's not me pitching you. Of course, you're my friend and 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 actually one of my best friends friends. So so I, I have a lot of respect for you and admiration for where you're heading. But I I, I have to say to you, I had a recent conversation with a gentleman who runs one of the world's largest foundations, the Ford Foundation, Darren, Darren Walker is his name. And in a conversation with him, for those who don't know who that is, Darren Walker is a, an incredible man who's responsible for actually assigning billions of dollars a year to uh, charitable efforts and initiatives. And what's happening, Noah, is there's a shift. There's a shift away from what wealth once was, what philanthropy even was, what giving even meant that just because I gave someone a dollar doesn't mean it made a difference. Yeah. And so there's this shift to finding and restoring the fiscal and philosophical uh, spirit for financial wealth to be able to say, hold on a second, there's gotta be justice. There's gotta be equality. There's gotta be impact. Um, is this resonating with you? And if so, why? Uh, of course it's resonating because you know there's so many, the, the problem I feel a lot of times is with a lot of different charity, so on and so forth, and all these different um, organizations is the money doesn't get to where it needs to go. You have people on the top of the, the totem pole that, you know, are taking G5s and spending the money and the donations not where it needs to go. So that, that's another thing that I really want to focus on. I want to hunt like St. Jude, you know, I do a lot with St. Jude's make a wish. And, and when you look at the breakdown, 100% is going to an amazing cause. And, and sadly, people are People are selfish, right? People are always trying to do what's best for them. They don't, they don't have that authentic, genuine heart. Not to say that they don't exist because there's plenty of amazing people in the world, but they're, they're a dime a dime. They're, they're just not everywhere, right? So, no. so that's, the, that's what I want to do, impact people in such a way and make sure that the money goes to where it needs to go and you're making a difference in the world because life is hard. The game of life, what is winning at the game of life, right? How do, how do people define it? Life is an experience. It's 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 a myriad of experiences put together and it's what you make of it, but it all starts with mindset, right? And the people you surround yourself with and, and people that lift you higher, that truly want to see you win. Like, hey, let's celebrate our wins. Let's make money together. Let's break bread. But at the same time, let's make a difference in the world. Let's not just be, hey, selfish. I'm a billionaire. Okay, great. Hey, Bezos, you got billions. Wonderful. Great. How about let, let's give everyone a $2,500 credit on Amazon while people are struggling. Let's make a difference in the world. Let's help people because a lot of people have nothing, right? So it's not right. about money. 
I love it. I love it. If you're if you're digging what Noah Schwartz is saying right now, put some love in there in the chat room, right there, right down there in the chat room. Let him know. Give him a give him some vibe. This guy's an energy guy. This right. guy's all in on you. You got to be all in on him. Um, hey, listen. You know, as as you say that, a, a long time ago, one of my mentors, I got a chance to write a book with, uh, and this is not a plug either because I won't even bother mentioning the name of both he or the book. But there was a term we came up with, so I can't own it entirely, and it was called life worth. Noah, life worth. So you have a net worth, right? A net worth is you take everything that you own, you subtract everything that you owe, and that's left with a net worth. Then you have this thing called self-worth, which is a sense of self-confidence and conviction. It's often found in the power of your choice and your experience of freedom, self-worth. But life worth is the value you give to and get from life. Life worth is the value you give to and get from life. And I got to tell you, brother, um, in, in the time that uh, when I last saw you, I thought to myself, now this cat is going to be up to moving the needle on life worth, being someone who's really, and I want you all to write this down, a force to move the needle to grow richer in the things that matter. When, you, when we say all this, when we talk about life worth, when you talk about mindset, um, what's the first thing that you think you want to really, truly tackle as a problem, as a challenge in the world? If Noah Schwartz had his fingerprints on it, and he's moving all his proverbial chips in on what's is there something in the world right now that's really just irking you pissing you off keeping you awake is there a problem on the planet that when your son or daughter god bless either way right god willing that that you just don't want them to have to deal with because we as a generation before them didn't yeah you know i mean we i mean people 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 be on this on this computer for all 24 hours listening to this conversation if <laughs> we're gonna need some tequila and get get the ball rolling but there's a, there's a myriad and a, and a multitude of things that really, one, rub me the wrong way. One is, and again, this is kind of going off a little bit to the left, is, is, is uh, healthcare. Healthcare really, in the sense like Western medicine bothers me in the sense that you go, you know, my friend who's head of cancer research for a, for a big pharma company told me, and, and which really bothers me is with healthcare is they don't want cures, they want customers. And that's something that, at the end of the day, when you look at, and, and I started again, kind of as you aforementioned, getting into biohacking, understanding the body um, on a cellular level and what's going on. It's like, it's like my friend's father. I'm gonna go into a quick story. He, he got diagnosed with type two diabetes. And I said, you know, you should do a chem panel. You should, you should go through, let, let me go through all your numbers, so on and so forth, your biomarkers and see what's going on. And, and so everyone is different. What works for me may not work for you, so on and so forth. And uh, the doctor prescribed all these medicines to him didn't tell him, hey, maybe change your diet, do certain things, exercise a little. Anyway, so I, I got him on a natural route called berberin, which is a replacement for Lipitor and statin and all these different things. And he did some exercise. His A1C was high, so on and so forth. And within six months, he, he wasn't insulin resistant anymore because people don't understand like when you, when you eat, every time you eat, your body has activates insulin to convert what you're eating into glucose, right? Simple. It's a, it's a simple formula. And we've been told eat six meals a day, eat six meals a day. Well, what happens when you, when you eat six meals and you're eating carbohydrates, carbohydrates, your body has to release insulin all the time to convert it. Right? Well, what happens when you turn a light switch on 50 million times, the light burns out, right? And our bodies do the same exact thing, but these doctors, they're taught diagnose and prescribe. You know, and, and is there a solution for it? No, but when you look at, is there a solution? Maybe, but it's bigger than us because when you look at big pharma, you look at all these companies, you look at cholesterol, for instance, it's $4 trillion a year industry, right? You can't disrupt that industry. It's just, it's not possible, but people aren't educated or, or, or they're not educated by a doctor to say, hey, make these changes, do this for your life, for longevity. Let's focus on our health as well. So that's one thing that really bothers me. Um, that's one topic that, that I think needs to be addressed in a lot of ways. And then we can go into corruption with government, so on and so forth, but then I may disappear. So I don't want to do that. Um, no, no, no. But, 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 you know, for those who don't know you and, and only I have the benefit and, and the blessing, by the way, of knowing you know, and I look forward to spending more time with you because you're opening up Pandora's box. And, and that is, you know, here's a guy who goes from poker to purpose, from cards to cures. And, and that's not an everyday occurrence, Noah. I, I want to acknowledge you for that. It's not every day. And I want you all to write this down. For those who are taking note, we're here with Noah Schwartz, uh, fourth in the world, all things poker, uh, my friend, uh, Chica Chica, dad expecting. Um, I mean, it's not every day someone's that bold and vocal 
about what pisses them off, what doesn't sit well with them. And they're like, you know what? I'm, I'm all in on getting that corrected, on getting that fixed, on getting that modified. And so it's refreshing. It's refreshing for a change. We, we, we typically will expect that from CEOs of big, large publicly traded corporations or, or politicians that were voted in by us, the people. And, and you would hope and pray and, and wish and wait on them to make a difference. But we all know that it's private enterprise and private community people just like you and I, like Mike, like Yusuf, like Christine, like Jill, like Bethany, like, like Kaya, we, we're the ones who really, in fact, move the weight. So, so at this juncture for you, Noah, what are you currently doing right now to, to, to ready yourself or prepare yourself? What, where, are you, where are you putting your time right now to really step up and behind all of the things that really light you up? So, so for me, every day, it's, it, again, it's, it, it is wake up with purpose. It's, it's mindfulness. It's, it's journaling. It's me, creating the best version of myself every single day. But again, I'm out there, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, the other day it was a homeless guy and he was just in the middle of the street. And I, and I just stopped the guy and said, Hey, how's your day going? And the guy was like, said, great. I was like, here's $20. Don't do drugs. I go, he promised me. And he was like, all right. You know? And he was like, and then I said, I, I just asked him, I was like, Hey, do you need a hug? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I, I'm just, Hey, are you curious? You need a hug? And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, actually I, I kind of do need one. I give the guy a hug. I'm like, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, imagine it. And here's another story, which, which I want to share. It's like, I, I was in the World Series. I was at the World Series of Poker and I, and I was at an event, you know, and I'd be like, ah, me, whatever. I can think I'm cocky. It doesn't matter. But I turn around to a guy and he's mopping the floor, you know, and I turn around and I go, hey, how's your day going? You know, it's a small little gesture. The guy looked at me, he said, man, my day's great. And I was like, I was like, really? Here he is. He could say he's a janitor. He's as an, you know, maybe. And I said, why is your day going great? And he goes, you know, I just spent 16 years in prison and now I'm free. And man, what a blessing this is. And I said, wow, you have a great mindset. I went in my pocket, I grabbed 500 bucks to the guy, 500. I said, here, I, went in, I gave it to him. The guy looked, he's like, why'd you do that? I'm like, man, cause you got a great attitude in life. Now I can't walk around and hand everyone $500 cause I don't have that type of wealth. And I'm not gonna pretend that I have it. You know what I mean? But I impacted this guy, the guy started crying. And he goes, man, you just, you, you made my whole day. I said, no, no, you made your own whole day because your attitude did that. Cause you could have been miserable. And the guy started crying and said, wow, you restored my faith in God. You know, in that moment, it was just like, there's a bigger calling for me in life and poker's not it. You know what I mean? Like I'm here to impact the world. And it's sad because sometimes you look around and who has the platform and you look at some of these people and you're like, the message that they're conveying to our kids, that's not the people that should be reaching out and, and impacting society. You know, when your song is a WAP, I mean, and what it means, it, it, it's, it's, it's sad that this is what our culture is looking up to and singing and, and, and this, these, these are our idols. No, no, that's, that's bad. That's really bad. And we, yeah, need, no, to, you're right. we need to invoke change, right? And it's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot because people, there's a reason Instagram calls them followers because everyone's following. They're not leading. Let's lead. Let's take people to new heights. Let's teach people how to do things differently. Let's, let's teach people to fulfill. Last week, are you happy? Instead of how are you? You know, hey, are you happy? What, what is happiness to you? You know, this is what matters, you know, truly. And it starts in the mind and it's very hard because we're all battling something. I don't care if you have money. You, some people have money, they don't have health. They have health, they don't have money. Nobody has it all. It's equilibrium. That's just the way, that's just the way life works. You know what I mean? God, we're all gonna die, sadly. And, and, and in this book that I read by Ernest Becker, The Denial of Death, it talks about it. We compartmentalize it. But if we accept the fact that somewhere down the horizon, it may end, it's going to end. But as a result, you don't tiptoe through life trying to get safely to death, right? You live a full life. You impact people. You help people. You just be a good human. Again, I, I can't reiterate that enough. Be a good person. Talk to people. It's, we're human. Emotion, this. We need to take our masks off. We need to conversate. We need to we need to engage, you know, and that's that's what gets the neurotransmitters flowing, the dopamine. That's what we need, you know. We don't need this. It's it's, it's just we need change. We need change. I love it. Period. I love it. From cards to change, from change to a culture. I mean, I'm all in for the hugs. I mean, who here by show of hands would be in all for the hugs from Noah Schwartz? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but but listen, guys. I mean, here here's a couple of things I want you to make a note of. And and, and by the way, Noah. As, as we round out the, the, the interview, just, just let me know. And if you're uncomfortable, let me know. But, but are you cool with getting a couple of questions from people from around the world that might yeah, want to- I, I love it. I mean, I mean ho hopefully I'm able to answer them. Sometimes I'm at a loss of words. I can't find my tongue sometimes, but I'm in. That's, that's okay. Well, the good news is the tongue's in there. 
and you'll find it, but we'll get to that in a second. But, but here's what I get from Noah. And, and I mean, uh, and just so you know, to clean something up, the Chica Chica was when uh, Noah and I were riding, we're, we're riding in Miami and we're, and we're comparing notes on, on our Instagram handles. And he's got the blue check mark. For those who don't know, that's the, the Instagram verification. Now he looks at my account. He goes, he goes, yo, man, where's your Chica Chica? I'm like, my what? He goes, your, your blue check mark, your Chica Chica. I said, dude, man, I never heard it called Chica Chica. He goes, damn, it's a Chica Chica. For about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, to the dismay to our entire company, we didn't care who we were with. We were with billionaires. No kidding, right, Noah? We were with billionaires. Man, all Noah and I can talk all night was Chica Chica. What's up with Chica Chica? You got a good Chica Chica? Man, I'm cool, Chica Chica. What's up with you, Chica Chica? And everyone's like, shut up with the Chica Chica. I go, hey, you ain't got no Chica Chica. It was just that. So so um, I always felt not compelled to get my account verified because I didn't want to really uh, subject myself to the way it needed to go. But Noah woke me to a way, um, got me awake, Naran, to the idea that I have to be responsible for my platform. And for the first time ever, I applied for my verification. I never applied for it ever before. Now, I don't whether I get it or not, it doesn't even matter because at the end of the day, it's all about the Chica Chica. But, but it's all about also being responsible for the voice you have in the platform you've got. And Noah, that's what you've got. We've got lots of, of, of questions lined up, but I want to just say- Love no. it. I'm here, I'm here. I, I dedicated all this time for them, for you, and I'm here. I'm all, all right. right. So, I well, I got you. I got you. Well, let, hey, Noah, I'm going to go up to uh, Kyle Guthrow um, from Toronto, Ontario. Come on in, Kyle. You've got Noah Schwartz right now live. Awesome, awesome. Hey, Noah, it's Kyle here. Um, Everybody. My question for you is, from coming from a terrible poker player such as myself, uh, how, because this is a tricky subject, how do you distinguish the difference between professional poker player and gambling? Because you obviously know there is the harsh repercussions of what people are trying to do pursuing your career. And I'm certain that people have lost lives occupations and not to make this grim but how did you distinguish the difference between that such clear fine line like how did you know the difference you were um playing versus gambling got it got a great question I, I spend some time actually in toronto so maybe when i'm up there i, I stay in uh what's it called like the hazelton Hazel yeah. yeah yeah so great question and, and you know what when i first started so so I, I got my break and I'm just going to give you some quick background and how I sort of got very, very lucky. Um, and it's, it's kind of going off on a tangent from what you said. But when I first started playing, um, I, I didn't know, right? It was just a competitive aspect. It, it's the way it made my brain fire. Like I just wanted to be very good at it, but I was addicted, but I didn't know. I wasn't able to differentiate the two. I thought I was just playing what quote unquote, and now it's banned in the United States to play online technically in 45 of the states because it, they, call, they call it a game of chance. And, and, and it's crazy because you can play, um, you know, fantasy sports and all these different things and legalize marijuana, but poker is a game of skill. Um, but yeah, a lot of people aren't able to differentiate their addiction and their ability to be good at something, if, if you know what I mean. And for me, um, it, it, it was like an epiphany, you know, as I was going through it, I'm like, I'm going every night. I'm not spending time with my girlfriend. And I said, wait a minute, like, what am I doing? You know, I, I need to break this barrier because there's more to life. And how do I do that? And then I went, when I, when I sat back and I said, wait a minute. And I reflected, I'm like, you know, maybe now I look at all my vices and I'm like, wait a minute, I actually am addicted to gambling. And it's hard to admit that, right? It's hard to admit when you have a problem. But admitting it is the first way to, to take action on that problem, if that answers your question. I don't know if it does specifically. It, it absolutely does. Thank you. And just a really quick part B to that question sure. is, this is your profession. If you were to ask people that are running very successful businesses that work 100 hours a week, would you say that they're addicted to their business? So that, that, there's also, again, that fine line. There is a very thin line. So you could be addicted to gambling, but some people might say I'm addicted to my job. Yeah. And some, some people are being an entrepreneur. So that's, I, I love yeah, it. And, and that's why I think for me personally, again, it's like, if, if you look at the whole picture for me, I think balance is the key, right? So when I was younger, I was, I would be in South of France. I would be in Germany. I would be in Australia. And instead of one experiencing the culture and, and going out and, 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 and learning and, and, and finding all these different avenues and going out, I would be in a casino 20 hours a day playing poker, right? 
So that was like, you don't get these opportunity knocks, right? But it doesn't knock forever. There's one day where there's, there's no knock on the door and you're like, hey, wait a minute, you know? And, and that was the thing. And, and I was younger. I didn't know. I, I, I had to, I was focusing on success also. So it, it is, again, I mean, you bring up a really good point. There is a really thin line. And, and, and for some people, it's it, that, that approach and, and putting in 100 hours a week. But depending on the job and, and what business you're in, you also have people who depend on you, right? You, you own your own company. You have all these employees. And they need your success to survive, to, to thrive. So they need you as bad as you need them. You know what I mean? So for me, the results, it's almost, I am responsible for all my results, but listen, sometimes the dealer happens. I have the best hand. I'm 83% to win. The guy needs a seven, he gets a seven and I lose $500,000 and it's a terrible feeling. You know what I mean? But you, the money can't mean anything at the end of the day. It's like, it's like in entrepreneurship, you go all in, you're going for it. You're going balls to the wall. You have to find a way. It's like the guy who started FedEx. I don't know if you know the story, Fred Smith. The first few weeks when he started FedEx or first couple months, he couldn't make payroll. He took a, a small amount of money to Vegas, went and played blackjack and won like $25,000. And that's how FedEx came about. But imagine he went all in. He didn't have any other option, right? So that's the thing, like never waste a moment because you don't know when that next moment comes and you don't know when it's over, right? It can happen any time where it's game over in any which way. So cherish the people you love, spend the time and don't waste time, period, end of story. Every minute is so valuable. The, the, the time that I spend with you guys here on this, I can't ever get it back and you guys can't ever get that time back. So it's adding value and I'm hoping that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm opening your guys' eyes to different things and you're like, wait, wait a minute, this resonates, this makes sense, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks, Kyle. Good question. Hey, Wait, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's true, Noah, man. I, I, gosh, I hate it when I lose $500,000 around, but, uh, you know. It's all relevant, 500, 1,000, 2,000, whatever. I'd rather donate it to charity. You know 100%, what I mean? <laughs> 100%. We got Michael Neal coming in. You got Noah Schwartz, buddy. Go ahead. Hi, Noah. Michael from Philadelphia. Thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having uh, me. I read on your Instagram profile a great quote that stuck with me, and I had to ask you about it. And as a wannabe, very mediocre home game poker player, this okay. um, clicked with me. It, you wrote, inside every short stack, there's a large stack waiting to be born. <laughs> and my question for you, both poker-wise and life-wise, I think I may know the life-wise one because you touched on it. What are two ways that someone like me can make my you know, poker short stack become a bigger stack and just in terms of practical ways to improve. But then on the other hand, in life, what are things that you've done in order to go from the proverbial short stack to a much larger stack? Yeah, great, great question. Thanks. Thanks for the question. And, and, and as far as, so we'll, we'll, we'll focus on the, the poker part of it. Um, poker is a game that's constantly evolving, right? You're learning, you're growing, and people ask me when I sit down at a table, when I first sit down, if I don't know guys, or even if I do know them, I'm sitting there and it's like, you take the approach. It's like you're, you're in a school zone, right? I'm sitting there, I'm going 10 miles an hour and I'm analyzing everyone. I'm, I'm saying, okay, which guy do I want to get in a pot with? Which guy when, when, you know, he, he only plays really good hands when it comes four five, eight, am I going to be able to take all his money? Which player is, has a similar skill set to me that I don't want to really be in as many pots with him. So it's, it's like life where you're like, you're analyzing everything and then you're, you're trying to make an optimal decision with the information you have, right? So you're going there, you're sitting at the table, you have a short stack, but you're, you're going to know, hey, I want to target this guy. I want to target that guy. And, and you're going to take advantage of that. You know, it's game selection, it's understanding and it's being comfortable to play within. And I don't, everyone's here is probably not a poker player, be within your bankroll, right? You have to be comfortable. You have to be willing to go all in and not say, oh, if I lose this money, I'm not going to be able to pay my bills or I'm not going to be that. So comfort enables you to be your true self, I think is with poker. And I think that relates in life too. It's like, you, you don't want to put too much pressure on a situation where, oh my God, like if we don't make our numbers, my family can't eat. You know, that puts a lot of pressure on people and not a lot of people can handle those situations. So again, it, it's, you're, you're willing to go all in in all aspects of life all the time. Like I remember when I first went, I mean, this tournament, when I was 22, I won the biggest tournament in the history of online poker. I had $4,000 to my name. It was on poker stars. I went to a wedding. I was 22. I, all I had was student loans and a bunch of bad debt. 
And I went to a wedding with a girl, completely platonic. We went to the wedding. It was Sunday morning and I woke her up. She's like, hey, let's go to the beach. I'm like, listen, I got to go play this poker tournament. It was one of my best friend's wedding. It was in North Florida. She goes, no, no, we're staying. I said, listen, it's very simple. Either you're coming or I'm leaving you. And this is the decision. She's like, oh, you're a jerk. I'm like, no, I'm not a jerk. I said, I have plans. I need to do something. Well, long story short, that moment changed my life forever because it was $1,000 to get in. I wired the money to Western Union. I literally had $3,000 to my name. But I said, you know what? I'm going to take a chance. Plus, I don't know any better. My mind's not, I'm like, all right, let's go for it, right? What's the worst that can happen? I'm going to end up on my back. My chest is going to hurt. And there's been moments like that where I lose it all. But you know what? You're going to get up because what is, what is your other option from getting up? You're going to lay there and pout and be sad. There's a term that I like to explain to people and it's called hedonic adaptation. So I see you today and I'm like, hey, I give you a million dollars. All of a sudden your brain, your waves start going crazy. You're like, wow. Noah's the nicest guy ever. Why would he do that? But in a year or two, so now you're on like the, you're on an incline on, on the treadmill. You're like, wow, this guy's amazing. But a year from now or two years from now, you kind of forget what I did for you. You compartmentalize it. Now the treadmill's more like this instead of like this because you're like, or I give you a lemon. And it's like, it's the same thing like losing someone you love. All of a sudden you, you, you go into this, this sadness and you're like, wow, you know, life is unfair. But are you going to sit there and, 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 and end up like that for no, you're going to say, you know what? You got to wake up and, and have purpose in the morning and say, you know, you, you, you love them. You, you remember them, but you have to move on. And that's, that's, it's like Zen Buddhism. Everything is impermanent, right? So knowing that everything's impermanent, you got to get up today and do what you got to do. You know, people always want to play the victim, always want to complain about what? No, focus on the positives. Let's figure a way to get shit done. Pardon my French. And that's what matters. You know, let's go for it. You know, what, what's the worst that's going to happen? No, oh, I love it. I love it. Hey, by the way, there's no fucking French here, just so you know. Right. So good. I love you, man. Good question, Michael Neal. Great I'm question. Gonna to, I'm going to come up to Kaya Gross, and uh, she's on the road. So please drive safe. And, yeah, drive safe. Pull over. Please be careful. It's uh, very important. Go ahead. I'm literally pulling into my community now, so we're good. Hi, Noah Schwartz. Hi, dear. How are you doing today? I'm fabulous. I need to tell you that you're an unbelievable speaker. And I didn't think I would even raise my hand because other than a few slot machines in Atlantic City, I don't, I just have terrible luck, but. No, you don't, you make your own luck. Don't say it. Oh, you froze, you froze. We need you back. Did we oh, lose her? No, we need her back. Get back on there. We're, we're gonna on. give her a second opportunity. We, we, will. Op we, we will, we will, we will. She's coming back, she's coming back. Is she coming back? Is that what you see? I, I'm sure she's coming back. It's her I, think we, out. I think we out, I think we outright lost her. So I'm going to come up to. Uh, she'll come back. She'll come back. So I'm going to go up to uh, Naran up here. Fuck it. Oh. Oh, can you hear me? Well, uh, okay. Wait. Is she back now? She's back. She, she was back. Now you. Now she just disappeared again. Oh man. All right, Naran. Why don't you go ahead? Kaya, your your audio is off and your signal is a bit askew. So just so you know. You might want Absolutely. To Thank you. Thank you so much, Rich, for always bringing us into these conversations and to your great circle of people. Noah, what an honor. Thank uh, you. Yeah, so nice of you to say. Thank you. The, uh, Noah, one of the things that I noticed about you is that when, you, when you're talking, what, what strikes me is that you're really good at reading a problem. When you say you want to uh, change the world, at the starting ground of that is you identify the problem and you're really good at reading the problem. And when you talk about poker, you earlier said that you were able to read the person really well. Can you help people like me? Give me, say, three hacks on how do you read the man or the player across the table? Or how do you read the problem that you're trying to solve? Good. So three hacks. So, so that, that's a great question. I mean, these, these, these guys, this is, this is like Mensa, Rich. I mean, these guys are unbelievable. I, I set you up. We need to I take these guys on a, on a trip to Vegas. And I mean, we're, we're going to read them all. I mean, that's what we need to do for the, everybody that's involved. Like, we just, need, it, man. we just need a big gathering. You know what I mean? Yeah, this guy's super sharp for sure. I mean, you know, I, well, we're, we're going to do something together in, in Miami, by the way. No, I'm going to give you a bigger platform, but more on that in a second. But I'll let you get to Naran's question. Okay, so, so, so Naran, I mean... Quite frankly, especially, we'll start with the poker table. It's, it, it's you, you learn, right? It's, it's like anything. It's the first time you ride a bike, you fall off. So, so when I'm playing with people and how I'm reading them, I'm looking for tendencies. You're looking for tendencies in conversation as well. You're looking at where their eyes are going. You're looking at, with poker, you look at the court, you look at the betting patterns, right? You're, and then 
The thing is, a lot of people, when they play poker, they're not paying attention to every single detail. I'm trying to look how this guy's betting, what cards are on the board. And then I'm trying to see, because if someone bets on the last card and the other guy calls, both people, well, usually one person definitely has to show their hand or they both show their hand. So now I, I, I'm basically putting that in my head. I'm saying, okay, well, this is how he played the hand. And you can, I can talk about a hand that a guy played that I wasn't even involved in years ago. And I remember how he bet and how he played the hand because that, I mean, obviously you're not going to pick up every bit of information. You just don't, our brains don't retain it all. It's, it's very difficult. So if I can pick up 5%, 7%, 8%, whatever the number equates to at the end of the day, it's going to help me be better. And it's just like in life. You, if you want to be better, you got to keep trying and keep doing, right? If you read a book or, or, or you try something new, first time, you're probably not going to be an expert at it. it it's just doesn't happen. It takes hours and hours of practice. It's like anything. It's always about having a, a, a positive edge. It's called EV, expected value, plus EV. When I look at a situation, I say, okay, is this a plus EV situation for me to be in? It's like a relationship. If you're in a toxic relationship, it's negative EV, whether it's a friendship, uh, a, a relationship with a girl, boy, whatever, you know? So you need to know, like sometimes you want people to change, but they're not going to change. You want someone to be someone else, but you have to allow the person to strive you need to let them be who they want to be. And if that person doesn't fit what you want, then you're with the wrong person. You're in the wrong friendship. You know, be genuine. Be friends with people for what they bring to the table, how they make you feel. You want to be around those type of people in life. People that are constantly lifting you higher. If they're bringing you down, cut the cord. It's like an umbilical cord. Get rid of it. Period. End of story. Not, oh, maybe it'll be different. Maybe No, it won't. You know? It is what it is, but it's for you have to make the change. You have to want it. And that's how everything is in life. You got to go for it. I tell people, go for it. Chase your dreams. The chances of being born are one in 400 trillion. When that little sperm goes to the fallopian tube, you become you. You are special. And don't forget that. You know what I mean? Go after your dreams. Don't let anyone tell you you can't. You this can't. Can. Trust me. This chat went from uh, PG-13 to rated R, folks. We're talking sperm and fertilization. I love it, Noah. I love it. Chica Chica. We can jump all around. That's how you do it. You know what I Come mean? Come on, Noah. Give me, give me a Chica Chica, man. Come on. It's, no, it's like it's from McLovin in, in Superbad. Chica Chica. You know that? You don't know that. Oh, you're too young. <laughs> I got socks older than you. You don't even know what you're saying. Get out of here, Noah. You know what's going on. Okay, I got, Kaya, I got Kaya back. She's right, in Kaya's back. In KG. KG. Kaya. The real KG. You know what? Well, the real KG. Noah, I'm so glad I'm back. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, perfect. You loud and clear. Really, you're loud and clear. You got the you, microphone. Just so you know, your volume is really high, Kaya. Your, your volume is really high, just so you know. My volume is always really high, and I want to thank you, Rich, for bringing Noah in, because Noah, in like a, a, a regular world, our paths wouldn't have crossed, because you're a poker guy, and I, I, don't, I don't play poker. But your energy is so crazy off the charts, and you speak so well. Plus, I hear your father's Brooklyn, and it's like I hear my brothers talking. My question is, when was there a specific time for you that you pivoted into this deeply intellectually emotionally balanced person because I hear the philosophy, I hear the Amor Fati, I hear the Buddhist, Zen Buddhism. When did you fall in love with learning and executing it? You, you know, it took me, I, I was, so I started playing poker when I was 17 years old, obviously. When my father passed away again, it was one of those epiphanies where I played the victim role. I was like, why? You know, like he was so instrumental in my growth and development and, and, he showed me so much love, you know what I mean? And my mom, you know, God bless her. She was with another man and that's fine. We didn't have the best relationship. And, and that moment I, I was like, I wanted to, I wanted to feel like the victim. Like, you know, why, why did this happen to me? The person that I love the most is no longer here. And, and I, and I could have, you know, felt bad for myself. And I could have said, and, and there were times where my mind would, would, would go into different places. And I, and I would think like that what is the purpose of life? Like, why would, why would God or the higher power or whoever it is do this, you know? And I didn't really understand. And then I just, when I wrote, when I, he passed away on July 4th and when he passed away, I got a call in the morning and first thing I, they got to say, listen, you know, we have bad news. And I already knew because I went to see him on July 3rd and I, he came and 
he, he, I said, listen, we're going to come watch fireworks at the hospital the next day. And he pulled the IV out of his arm that night. And it was like, and then the next day I got the call and I went straight to the computer. I was living with my friend at the time, a childhood friend. And I just started typing, you know what I mean? And, and I wish I had the letter, which I can't find, which is really bothering me. But it was like, what am I going to do? You know, am I going to give up? No, I, I got to keep going. You know what I mean? I got to find a way because, because there's no other option. At the end of the day, you got to go for it. And, and, and I, that's kind of not exactly where you were going. But when you talk about pivoting, so I started playing poker. And, and there were times, you know, I made a million dollars in a night. And I was like, wow, this is great, right? Like, people don't make a million dollars in a lifetime. But what am I doing to help people? Like, people look up to me. They're like, wow, you know, I get all these messages on social media. You know, hey, uh, you know, I want the glasses you wore on television, whatever the case. And I'm like, there's more. Like, people, people need access. They need the password to my mind. You know what I mean? And it's a long password. The encryption is, is deep. It's SSL encryption that not too many people have access to. But I like helping people, truly, like seeing people smile and making a difference in someone's lives. For that, to me, means everything. And money is great, right? Money is a means to an end. Again, going back to what I said, financial freedom is important, right? Hey, let, hey Rich, let's go on a trip. All right, we don't have to worry about if the ticket costs $7,000, right? Great. But is that going to make me happy? No. We, we, we're so consumed with buying, buying what we have because society deems it, oh, you have a Louis Vuitton bag, you have this, you have that. But at the end, when you're, when you're at the end of life, what does it all mean, right? You want to live a fulfilled, full life and you want to touch people. And so that's why poker was sort of a means to an end. It gave me the options. It, it helped me learn different things, but it helps me also in life because I've met so many amazing people playing poker. Don't get me wrong. I've met awful people, but the celebrities, the people that I've played with, the doors that it's open has been amazing, right? Amazing. And I see it, but there was more. And, and I knew it. It clicked. And I, I would say that the, the age, if you, want to, if you want to put a number on it, was probably, so I'm 37 now. It was probably when I was 31 or 32 where I was like, you know, I met my wonderful fiance. I was like, you know what? I want more. I want to be, my father didn't really, he had me, he was 45 when he had me, he had me late. So I felt this pressure to have children and teach them and instill wisdom on them and help them and guide them. But again, I'm going to let them out the door. They got to figure it out the same way I had to figure it out. I'm not going to sit here and be like, hey, I'm going to buy you everything you want because I had nothing. I lived with no electricity before. Like I, I come from zero. And a lot of people say that. But like, I mean, I had water in my cereal, like true story. I mean, it is what it is. Right. But no, I, go ahead. No, I, I spoke on top of you. I thought you were over. Sorry. But, but no, I'm always uh, all good. No, no, you had, you, you had, there's lots of things you didn't have, but, but I just, I didn't want to interrupt you. And, and I mean, I'm, I'm very cognizant of the fact that an hour just blew by right now. Wow, crazy. I got Yusuf up here from uh, Stuttgart, Germany, wanting to ask you a question. I want to make sure I yeah. squeeze as many people in the final few minutes that we've got left. But Yusuf, go ahead. You got Noah. Hey, Noah. Um, you've been blowing my mind, man. Um, I could have, I could ask you so many questions. Look at that view, man. I want to be where you are. You're in Miami, like I'm in Germany. So this yeah. background is just fake. It's all right. We'll <laughs> it's pretend it's real for now. But um, let me ask you this. So you're number four in poker in the world. So Used to be. Now I don't play much, but yeah, anyway, I, at one point but I was. You were there at some point in your life. So, yeah. so your relationship to risk is pretty crazy, I bet. So can you describe what your relationship to risk is and what advice could you give us to build a healthy relationship to risk? Yeah, so, so that, that's a very good question. And, and, and growing up when I was, because you're a young guy, and I, but um, when I first, I, I was always willing to put it all on the line. I remember at one point I played in this poker game with a couple NBA guys, and this is talking about risk. And the game was too big for me. I mean, we were playing stakes that everyone was buying in for a quarter million dollars. And I had about $600,000 to my name. So obviously I wasn't prepared to be in this game, but I said, you know what? I'm going to go for it. And so I called up one friend. I said, hey, listen, you know, I'm playing in this game. To be comfortable, you need about a million and a half dollars to play in this game. And he said, he said, okay, Noah, you know, I'm going to go partners with you. I'll put up half the money. You put up half the money and we'll play. Okay. So I'm 23 years old. So I start playing. I'm down $800,000. I call my girlfriend at the time. We're now 24 hours into the game. I'm like, She's like, where are you? I'm like, I'm still, I'm playing poker. She goes, what do you mean? I'm like, uh, I'm not in the best situation right now. I'm down 800,000. She goes, no way. I'm like, yeah. So 
don't bother me for 24 hours um, and we'll talk soon. She's like, what do you mean? Are you cheating on me? I'm like, what? What are you talking about? No, I'm playing poker. Like, she couldn't understand. Anyway, so I called my buddy. I'm like, listen, we're down 800,000. He's down 400,000. I'm at the end of my bankroll. What do we do? I said, listen, I'm going to go in for another 300,000 and just believe in me. And he's like all screaming at me. He's like, well, why didn't you tell me? Da, da, da. I'm like, listen, it's 24 hours. I barely even know where I live anymore. What do I do? I'm like, just believe in me, bro. Like, I'll get the money back. I'm like, these people are so bad and they're so tired. And just, just leave me alone. Like, let me do what I do. Long story short, the game went for 72 hours, right? I got the 800,000 back. I ended up winning 130,000, which wasn't, but it was like all my, I was all in, right? I didn't have a choice. I, I had to figure it out and I had to figure it out really fast. And sometimes you just got to think on the run. You're on the run and let's make it happen. And, and the health, I don't know if that's a healthy risk assessment where you're like, be risk adverse. I think each situation, when you look at someone's future and you look at their situation, you need to do what's optimal for you. So it's hard for me to say, just talking to you right here with this beautiful background in Germany, that how to make the best decision for you based on, because I don't have enough variables to say, hey, how do you improve or what do you do? Or I don't know what risk you're even taking, right? At the end of the day, a stock no, market. But, no, huh? but, but just, just a slipstream of what you're saying, because I want to go up to Martin and then Roberto, and then I want to acknowledge that we're just a few minutes over. So I want to just make sure that you're okay with your fiance, that we can just go a couple more minutes if you're cool she with that. She lifts me higher. I can go as long as you want to go, my brother. Well, that's not what she said, but we'll keep this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, that's right, right, right. But mm -hmm. here, here's the point. I mean, at the end of the day, I want you all to write this down. I mean, here's what I come to appreciate about Noah is that he lives life like he plays poker and he's always all in, like his life depends on it. And very rarely do people really live life like that because we live life like you're going to get another try, that you're going to be able to leave with the chips you came in with, that somehow someone's watching after you. Or somehow another game with a greater pot with better odds will show up on your on your lap sometime soon. But Noah's been playing to live. Not he, he's not living to play. And 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 there's something about the disconnect that I think in the world of self-development, self-help, self-improvement, self-transformation, where people think they're gonna get a better chance later on. But Noah, it sounds like you're always playing regardless of the odds. You're always all in, regardless of what's uh, what's really there to be won. You're there to really just try to get by and to survive another day. So uh, I want to acknowledge you for that, Noah. We got Martin Schroeder uh, coming in. Uh, Martin, why don't you introduce who you are and where you're from? Hello, Noah. I'm Martin and I'm from uh, Stockholm, Sweden. And uh, let's talk about your legacy, but uh, we're going to bring it to the present. So if you were to express your legacy in the present as all people are, and then you fill in the blank. So go ahead. All people have the password to your brain. That's he's got SSL encryption. So I mean, yeah, no yeah, you're, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have to be a, a a hacker for the Pentagon when the password changes every one nano, one nanosecond or one sixteenth of a nanosecond. But um, when you say all all people are, all people yeah, are, all people are, and then fill in the all blank. people, all people are, all I think all people have. The ability are you talking about to me or towards people all people no, have the ability the legacy. to the legacy you want to leave uh, you want to leave in the world uh but we bring to the present and we express it as all people are and then you fill in the blank of what you want to uh, leave like how do you want to leave the world like after you're gone right how do i want to leave all people are can you give me an example okay can I all, phone a all friend? people are inspired. All people are powerful. Oh, based, oh based, okay. So, so based on how I impacted people, you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But we bring it to the present to make it more powerful. Okay. So, so, so my my end goal one is is really awake. All people are awake because here's why. I feel like I encounter a lot of people who are asleep with their eyes open. You know what I mean? Be cognizant of things. Be aware. Again. You, us, all of us here today, let's impact people. Let's find a way to make a difference, right? Dude, look, how, look how fast you found that, by the way. All people are woke. All people are awake. All people are aware. That's amazing, Noah. I mean, that, that's, that's real cool. Um, hey, thanks for that, Martin. And, and I don't mean to, to rhyme off here, but I, I made a commitment to this, this man's future bride and, and, and the bun in the oven. So Roberto Scarpati, you've got the last words with Noah Schwartz. Go ahead, big man. If you're not first, you're last, right? In some Noah, Noah. Yes, yes sir. 
Nice view. I, I like it. Look at the sunroof. You're doing good, man. Uh, yes, you know, I'm, I'm in the New York area. I'm in wine business and spirits. I sell the, I sell with my team and I own an import company. And you might be number four in the world, but you're second to no one. I love, wow, man. That's strong. I love this guy. And uh, you are a very deep soul, sensitive inside. And I wanted to ask you a question because... I'm in wine business and I know how alcohol can affect a lot of people. Yes. And you you never took a stand to go down that route, even after you became famous, when we all know, unfortunately, there are some very good players in, in the past that they ended up with alcohol problem. Yeah. The no the no they sit on that chair today in front of those beautiful book colorful shells that you have behind you <laughs> if you would have to go back in time right and look at those people in the eyes during moments where they need someone the most but they don't have anyone what would you what noah today would tell them yesterday noah today what they're talking for people who when you, when you need someone wow. did, it, did they need someone yes what would i tell them noah from today noah yes. from back then you today, you today, yeah. And you see this, and you see these people playing and just going down the route. The life or just like in gambling, like addicted to get like gambling, alcohol, the alcohol problems, and just there's losing a lot of everything. Problems. I mean, I, I've had friends who have lost it all. I mean, I've seen people lose ten million dollars in a night, um, and, and, and it, it it's really hard, you know. And with with alcohol, I would tell people, you know, people need hope, right? They need. They need something to hold on to in life because not having hope is, is, is something that no one should have. You know, we all need something. We all need someone. We need people. We need inspiration. And, and, and people, a lot of people are struggling, whether it be mentally, physically, emotionally. And, and, and to, to give people just need someone to lean on sometimes. You know what I mean? And when I see people with problems, again, I saw a homeless guy and I said, hey, let me give you a hug. And, and no one else would do that, right? I mean, nonetheless, I, I say, hey, I, I'm me. You know, no, but I'm human, right? And we all need to be human. And that part, that component, we need to have more compassion, empathy, and, and, and just listen to people. And it doesn't take a lot, you know? And that's something that we need, to, we need to express to people. You know, life, the game of life is fucking hard. It really is. I don't care. We can pretend, we can go on social media and put this filter and act like our life is perfect. You know what? We all got problems. And if you don't have problems, then I can't give you any answers because we all you got problems. You ain't, you ain't playing full out. You ain't playing full out. You ain't playing full out. So, Noah, I mean, dude, we can go on for hours. I mean, that, and that's where I want to just give you a gift. I mean, for those who are here, I mean, has this been of value, guys? Give them some love. Let them know. Put in the chat room or give yourselves a Thanks, reaction. Thanks, guys. You guys are screen. awesome. Truly. Um, I mean, what I'm really committed to doing is working with you with a couple of my partners, but one in particular is Braun. And a lot of people know that I'm very much uh, close with that partnership there where we want to make sure that we amplify your reach and fortify your bandwidth to really go and help people find their purpose after poker. I mean, it's a global phenomenon of gambling and, and, and addiction, but also playing cards and finding one's cure after playing them. But man, dude, you are not just a, a champion for the cause. You truly are an ambassador for that stand. And I want to acknowledge you for it. I want to thank you for it. I love you for it. Uh, and you know that. But um, guys, I mean, was he not amazing? Is he not great? Amy is as handsome as I described. <laughs> chica, chica, chica. So, chica, hey, listen, Noah, man, I, I'm going to be seeing you soon. Uh, I hope you had a good time. This was a lot of fun. I loved it. I loved it, man. Have me on so anytime you want. I loved it. And, it, you know, we can, we can do part dukes. Absolutely, man. Well, listen, man, you, you go kiss your woman's belly. You let uh, both of them people know that we appreciate you. We appreciate them for giving a little bit of you with us. Um, on behalf of everybody here worldwide, from Germany to Spain to the UK, Great Britain, I mean, all things Portugal, Canada, US, you've gotten the world covered here. The replays will go several hundred uh, to places like India, Australia, New Zealand. Man, we send you our love and our appreciation, Noah. So thank you so very, very thank much. Thank you. And just want, if you guys, I have all sorts of inspirational stuff. You can follow me on uh, Instagram, no, at Noah Schwartz. Send me questions, anything. I'm, I always answer pretty much everybody. So I appreciate there you it. Go. There you go. On Instagram, at Noah Schwartz uh, is where his handle is, at Noah Schwartz. 
uh, is where you want to follow. I'm going to do a big shout out. I'll be doing a big post today. So uh, be ready for uh, lots of followers, lots of fans, lots of friends. So, Thank so Noah, from, from, from my heart to your ears, man, I love you. I got gotcha. you. And uh, we'll chica chica later, man. Chica chica. Love you guys, man. Have a wonderful day, man. Peace, love, and happiness. Stay Peace, blessed. Peace, love, and happiness, man. Be well, be great, everybody, because anything less is just ordinary. Absolutely.